Okay, we are back with yet another Starbase Summary. A little bit of a special edition, trying something new. You saw the commentary toggle there. Maybe explore the settings and see what other commentary you may find. Some other NSF personalities in their native language. Kicking it off over there at the production site. That first thing there was Booster 17. Barrel getting stacked around. And then we're going to go all the way over to the launch site where the chopstick jig beam was removed. Ready for flight. Maybe they didn't need that up there when they launched from the other pad, securing some of that equipment. One way to find out. It is uh, not uncommon for them to prepare the launch site, lay down cranes and martial equipment and stuff like that before flight, which may very well be coming up pretty soon, weather pending. There's the launch site right now on January 5th. That was a couple days ago. Not too terrible. But a cold front coming through this week and uh, a lot of rain coming through. Even today, the rain was not great at all. So Jack getting some fantastic time lapses here, but these were a couple days ago. And what's really going to play in here is the fact that they have preparations they need to do for flight that can be affected by weather. They need to work on the hot staging ring. Right? Well, if the wind is too high, they can't work on the hot staging ring. They can't take it off, put it on. You'll see some of that coming up in the video. But the weather can slow down flight preparations as well. Here's that big crane being moved over to pad A. Speaking of the hot staging ring, we're going to jump back to the assembly area really quickly. That's the launch mount that they continue to spit and polish. Maybe not quite to that level yet over at the assembly yard area before they roll the massive pre-generated, pre-assembled structure up the road to actually put it at that second launch pad. A lot of cool details on the work going on here, but I mean, you know, that's not big things. That looks like it is getting down to the little finishing detail. Is that the star cat? That is a cat. It's the silhouette of a cat. I don't know if it's the star cat star cat or another cat that has made it around there. It has been a long time since we've seen the Starcat <laughs> running around Starbase. Huh. Mysterious. Oh, we got some more of it. Jack <laughs> stalking the star. Oh, what do the colors look like? Y'all help me out. Okay, the front legs are white. Is that the original Starcat? Or is that like a new Starcat? I don't know. Help me out in the comments. Okay, so in the background here... I think they've been calling these dumb links or dummy star links. The sort of star link, um, they don't just simulate the mass. They have a bunch of the same connection points and stuff like that as a regular star link, but they would be non-functional, which is where they sort of get the name dumb link, right? But Jack catching those through the bay there. Also got another wide shot of the whole shooting match. Then we're going to zoom up the road. Mary getting a shot at pad B here with that crane. Scooting backwards a little bit. There's That was a yellow crane. This one's a black crane. This is the SpaceX LR11000. Still have the hot staging green, the crown on top there. You can see it really well on top of the booster, those holes for the exhaust gases to escape. There's the load spreader in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. I'm literally pointing at my screen when I say this. Uh, you can see that hot staging load spreader up there. But that's going to hang out for a little while. Again, this is sort of chronological here. Jumping back to see a little bit of daytime shot of that second OLM. And of course, scaffolding still all over the second set of carriage and chopsticks and the ship quick disconnect arm. We check in on those, still watching for those scaffolds to go down. That's a ship stand outside of Mega Bay 2. You can see the door for Mega Bay 2 is closed, but two SPMTs are one SPMT unit with the ship stand on the bottom of it. Maybe a ship needs to go somewhere. I mean, if they're going to launch, I sort of figure they should have the ship on top. Oh, look, that's a that orange sign. You see the orange sign, the octagon with the one on it? It indicates a, uh, an explosive risk in that area to like alert the, the responders or whatever, just so they can glance and see, hey, there may be explosives in this area if a fire starts or something. I think the guess there was doing FTS work in Mega Bay 2 and needing to put up that uh, orange octagon sign to denote that there are potential explosives in the area. I think that's a pretty good guess. But if y'all have other guesses, toss them down in the comments. I'll read them. I'll respond. All right. As expected, there's ship 33. 
Scooting down to the ship transport stand. Getting it lined up. Ah, yes. Okay, so atop of ship 30, 30, uh, 33 here, the door is all opened up. But you can see the catch pins aren't installed yet. We're expecting to see maybe some hardware about a ship catch possibility. Just have some guide, I guess like guidelines or guide pins or something like that in place right now. The payload bay door there opened as well. So here we go, okay. This is actually super interesting and I doubt that it's the, the way they're gonna actually load starships in the, or star links, payloads in the future. They had this sort of guide, right? Somebody's tossed this guide together to put them sort of backwards into the Pez dispenser, the little Bender, Big Benderson <laughs> payload door slot. And we're gonna see this get lifted up here and put into position. Jack catching a pretty good time lapse here of all this work in preparation because we thought it was gonna be really interesting. Okay, here you go. It's, it's like a little guide slot, sort of ramp entryway, whatever you wanna call it, going up the side of the ship. Luckily hasn't smacked against the ship yet. There's the payload day base slot and they're moving the sort of insertion guide there. And they're going to use this to sort of load those Starlinks or Dumblinks, whatever you want to call them, the, the Starlink simulators or Simlinks, into the payload bay. Because they don't have a way they can just put them in in one big stack. The way Starship is right now, they have to insert them one at a time, right? Or is it, is it really two at a time, I guess? Um, they have to insert them. They can't put in the whole stack because the Starship doesn't open up. So we're going to come back to that in a minute. Got to jump over to the launch site really quickly because they're taking the hot staging ring off here. You see the load spreader so that the single point in the middle of the crane doesn't crush or bend the hot staging ring. And they spread out the contact points there to keep it in position. Disconnect it, lift it up, and take it off the top. This happened overnight. So got some kind of tough views there with the nighttime views, but the hot staging ring was removed. We're going to hop back over and see the OLM again. This is the next day. This is the second launch mount they're working on. i got to put a nickel in the OLM jar because I said OLM. Still working on the chopstick carriage. But again, this is the scaffolds are still up, so not getting ready to roll those out anytime soon. Still working on the flame deflector. If you're a fan of the videos here, you watch these, you see we check in on this. But not a lot of really big, obvious progress there. So here we go back for flight top of booster 14 don't see the hot staging ring on top see some work happening up there during the day going to jump back over here to ship 33 in the mega bay second mega bay get a little bit of gratuitous zoom here courtesy boca chica gal and look at that oh wait you see right there on the hinge it, 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 does that it looks like a crew dragon. Is it supposed to look like a crew dragon? It really does look like, yes, enhanced, thank you. Well, it says SpaceX on the top. Is that a part that was close to the same shape as the crew dragon, so they just made it look like a crew dragon? That is really interesting. We've gotten rid of the banana for scale. But here, we're gonna hop over and see them load these Simlink, Dumlink, Starlink simulators, whatever name you prefer putting it down with that sort of little load spreader onto the alignment. Are they? All right, I wanna see if it keeps moving when they get their hands off of it. All right, y'all help me out. Okay, was there some mechanized process pulling it in the rest of the way or did it stop moving when they stopped pushing it? Let's watch again, because this is an entire process. I'm super curious if there is a like a like like an electronic, mechanical process that continues feeding it after their hands off. There, they're pushing. Now, see, are they pushing it, or are they really just, like, leaving their hand on it to sort of guide it or keep track of it? Oh, you have to rewind this quite a few times to see. All right. Pushing, sort of hard hat. What, is that Tori? Was that a, is that a cowboy hat, hard hat on the right-hand side with the green jacket? What in tarnation? <laughs> See, it looks like it came back out a little bit. But these have to be deployed uh, mechanically. Well, do they have to be deployed mechanically? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, in, in the end, when they're actually deploying Starlinks, there will have to be some sort of mechanical deployment mechanism to get them out, because there's not going to be a worker on a lift there pulling them out in low Earth orbit. I am just super curious if they're... There you go, there's another one. Y'all are going to have to let me know what you think you see there. Is it is it being pushed in by human power? Now see here, does anybody have a hand on it? Crane was in the way. I am super curious. Again, I, I haven't rolled this back like 15 times. I watched it in slow motion and see if they're really leaning into it and trying to push those things in, or are they just like guiding it? My gut is, why would you keep your hand on it with the number of pinch points around that? There's the payload bay door closing. So why would you keep your hand in that area if you didn't need to? Why wouldn't you use like a tagline or something to remove your hand from any pinch danger or whatever? But y'all let me know what you think was going on there. I'm, I'm super curious what other people think that they observed during that process. And remember, listen to the other commentaries if you speak other languages and maybe uh, <clears throat> some of the other NSF folks in the audio tracks there had different things to say about it. I would have to have them tell me because I don't speak any of those languages. But here goes the hot staging ring back up to the top of the booster in reinstalled. You can really see the weather starting to deteriorate here. It was even worse today, but that is going to bring us to the end of the Starbase summary. We're counting down to launch. We're seeing how that weather is going to work for us next week. And we will see when they get this thing off the pad. Again, thanks for hanging out with us. Remember, you can always change the audio tracks, explore the audio tracks, see what else might be there, and we will see you nerds later.